Welcome to this week's Tent of Meeting podcast. Why don't you press the like button after you've listened to it? You can also subscribe to the Tent of Meeting channel by clicking on the notification bell. It costs nothing, but you'll be notified every time there's a new podcast available. I've also left a video link that will take you to a hymn on YouTube that ties in with today's podcast, which you can listen to afterwards. Below the video, just select the, the, the two wee words, show more, and then click on the link. So the text we're looking at today is from the Hebrew Bible. It's from 1 Samuel chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse 1. I'm reading from the NRSV Bible. It's under the heading, David anointed as king. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look in the outward appearance, but the Lord looks in the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out, and went to Ramah. So here we have the story of the shepherd boy David, youngest of eight brothers, who was anointed king. It began when God spoke to Samuel, the seer. He was called a seer because this was the time before people were called prophets. Saying in verse 1, I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel went to see Jesse and told him to gather his sons so they could join him in the sacrifice. When Jesse and his sons arrived, Samuel saw the eldest, Eliab, and thought, as you and I would, surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Samuel worked his way through the sons of Jesse, seven of them, 
and each time it was the same outcome. The Lord has not chosen this one. So Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he's keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. When David got there, the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. So here we learn about the grace of God and how he chooses to use us to glorify him. When God looks at you, he doesn't see you as others see you. He sees you as you really are. And he sees you for what you can become. People may see in you the same way that David's father and brother saw him as being not up to the job, but God doesn't see you that way. So what does God see in you? Well, firstly, you're not a nobody. One of the most telling aspects of this story is the fact that Jesse brought his sons to Samuel to be given the once over as to who would be the likely king, and David wasn't included. He'd been told to stay with the sheep. So in Jesse's opinion, David was so unlikely to fit the bill that he was left out of the process completely. As far as his family was concerned, David was a nobody. We see this attitude again in the next chapter. When Goliath was defying the armies of Israel, David came to the scene of the battle and was scolded by his brothers for showing up. His brother Eliab said to him, what are you doing here? Who's looking after the sheep? This battle doesn't concern you. I think we've all been in situations where we've been told by those in so-called charge that we're not really wanted, that our help isn't needed, and that they can get by without us. But God has other plans, and you're part of them. You're not a nobody. Secondly, you're not too young or too old. After Samuel had seen Jesse's older sons, he said, are those all the sons you have? And Jesse replied, they're still the youngest. But he's looking after the sheep. Jesse knew that one of his sons was destined to be anointed king by the seer Samuel. But he hadn't even considered David because of his age and because he was the youngest son. For Jesse, David may have been too young to be king, but not as far as God was concerned. In some ways today, we allow our youngsters to grow up too fast. They're exposed to some experiences long before they should be. But in other ways, we allow them to grow too slowly, and we're often guilty of saying things like, you're just a child. What do you hope to accomplish at your age? It's amazing what a young person can accomplish when given the opportunity. There's a story I came across from a publication called Foreign Missions. It tells of a teenage student that an overseas minister met in Nigeria when he was out in Nigeria. The young lad spent his Saturdays hiking five hours in the bush to preach to a village who had never heard of Jesus. He was met with all kinds of hostility, especially from the leaders. But he didn't give up, and because of that, several villagers accepted Jesus as Lord and Saviour, and soon a new church was planted in their village. Within just two months, more than 100 people were meeting each week to worship in a, a mud-brick church that the people had built themselves, including the tribal chief. The course of history was changed for this entire community because of the commitment and perseverance of this one teenager. The point is, 
You're never too young to make a difference. In God's eyes, you're never too old either to make a difference. When it comes time to retire from your life's career, it doesn't mean you retire from serving God. You will never outlive your usefulness to him. The astronaut John Glenn orbited space at the age of 70. Thirdly, God doesn't see you as having limited potential. Samuel asked about all the sons and was told by Jesse, there is still the youngest, but he's looking after the sheep. That's all they thought David was good for, although it was a responsible job. But they didn't see his potential. <coughs> Excuse me. They couldn't have guessed that very soon David would boldly stand before Goliath in the battlefield and win one of the greatest victories in Israel's history. They didn't know that David would lead a band of warriors through victory after victory. They didn't know that David would govern his people with the hand of God in his life. All they knew about David was that he was the youngest son who took care of the sheep while they applied for the job of king. <coughs> Excuse me. They didn't, <coughs> they didn't see his courage or his leadership skills. You may be tempted to see yourself as just a school teacher or just a construction worker or just an events manager or just a business person or just a student or just a musician or just a whatever else. But God doesn't see you according to your limitations. He sees you according to your potential. Even rock stars have a limited role in life. Occasionally they'll do a benefit concert and raise money for a good cause. But we don't really see them as potential world changers, do we? I have to say I'm a big fan of U2, the Irish rock band. In the mid-80s, <coughs> their lead singer Bono took part in the Band Aid effort to raise money for the victims of the disaster in Ethiopia. He decided to learn more about it. So he and his wife spent six weeks in Ethiopia living in a tent among the refugees. And that was the beginning of a new mission for Bono, who by the way is a Christian, as are other two members of the band. In the years since he has made the plight of poverty-stricken Africans his consuming passion. He's not only raised huge sums of money on their behalf, but he has tirelessly lobbied American politicians and charitable organisations striving to create long-term change in the African economic picture. It wasn't enough for Bono to be just a rock star, just an entertainer. He wanted to do something in order to make a difference. And so he stretched far beyond the limits of his job description to do it. You too, if you pardon the pun, can stretch beyond the limits of your job description <clears throat> because if you let him, God can accomplish great things through your life. God doesn't see you as a nobody. He doesn't see you as too young or too old. And he doesn't see you as limited potential, no matter what you do for a living. These are the things God doesn't see in you. So the question is, what does he see in you? Well, let's look again at the words God spoke to Samuel in verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. God doesn't see you as others perhaps see you. He sees in you what they cannot see. He sees your heart and he knows your heart. The, more, the world may judge you according to your looks, according to your money, according to your status, or according to any number of things. 
But God looks at what really matters. He looks at your heart. It's as simple as this. When your heart belongs to him, he can then use you. Let's pray. Loving God, you see what we are capable of because you look at the heart and so grant us the courage, the wisdom and the passion to step forward in faith, a faith that trusts and not just believes. May we be a people with a heart for Jesus. And so Lord, we humbly pray that you would transform us so that you can do great things with us for your glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thanks for listening. Please listen now to the worship song by pressing show more below the video and then select the link. Enjoy and may the blessing of God be upon you and all those you love until we meet again. Baruch Hashem, blessed be the name. Amen.